if you talk to any primary care physician, uh, they will tell you that couples do come to them and uh, inquire about uh, back pain with sexual activity, uh, hip pain as well, for example. And the physicians have never had any science to base uh, their recommendations upon. Uh, so we saw this as a necessary uh, investigation uh, to try and figure out what the joint sparing uh, techniques were, uh, create an atlas, and then uh, be able to give guidance uh, to the physicians uh, for their patients who do have uh, back pain and uh, hip pain. We created an atlas, which is essentially guidelines that clinicians can use when they're making recommendations to their low back pain patients on which sex positions uh, they should avoid or which sex positions would be more recommended. So once the clinician has um, determined what movements trigger their patient's back pain, they're able to then go to this atlas, uh, refer to these guidelines to help make decisions on which positions to avoid or which positions may be comfortable for the low back pain patient. For the first time, uh, we were able to document uh, the loads on the tissues, the muscle activity levels, and uh, how the stress uh, migrated through the body based on the uh, position for sex. So we found out why certain positions uh, are tolerable by some people and intolerable uh, by others. Well, if you look at uh, some of the existing literature and textbooks that make recommendations on sexual uh, positions and technique, remember they were uh, just people's opinion. There was no science that had been performed before to create the foundation for the recommendations. So what we found is uh, there are uh, certain positions and motions that create pain in uh, some patients. Uh, for example, flexing the spine like this causes pain for those who have disc bulges. So what we would now recommend is to hip hinge around the, the hips like this and that you'll see that the spine doesn't move versus this kind of a, uh, a motion that really creates a lot of pain in the um, discogenic or the disc bulging patient. This is a model of the uh, sacrum, which is in the pelvis, and the bottom uh, lumbar vertebra. And I just want to show what uh, happens when the spine flexes and squeezes. You'll notice the disc uh, bulge uh, posteriorly, and that goes right into the neural canal. Um, so if the person who has this type of pathology flexes their spine like this, they will create that disc bulge and it will grow. However, if they avoid that motion and use the hips like this and don't bend the spine, you'll notice that the uh, herniation doesn't bulge and uh, sex becomes pain-free. For the first time, uh, healthcare practitioners have guidelines that are based on hard science. Prior to this study being conducted, uh, there was one position that was typically recommended sort of as a one position fits all type idea, and that was spooning. And what we've actually found after conducting this study is that that's not necessarily the case. For a male flexion intolerant patient, spooning is actually the least recommended of the positions that we studied.